Welcome to the Take the North podcast. I'm David Hoff from 670 The Score. Dan Weeder from the Chicago Tribune. Hours after the Bears, 41-10. to Disaster in Kansas City, dropping them to 0-3 on the season. Dan, we have seen versions of this before, and I don't know if there's nothing left to say or the conversation is just beginning. This is a team that drops to 0-3 for the first time since 2016, the second year of the regime with Matt Eberflus and Ryan Poles, and it is as bad as it looked, and it was as embarrassing as it seemed. So I don't know where the goes, where the Bears go from here, but there's nowhere to go but up. I don't know if that's true, because I've thought that three or four separate times now, and they keep going lower <laughs> and lower and lower. I'm sitting inside a conference room in the back of the Arrowhead Stadium press box right now. And I feel like I need pads on these walls, David. I feel like it's like starting to reach the point of insanity where you're like, how in this league, this parody driven league where competitive football is supposed to be the norm. Do you find yourself in a 31 to nothing halftime hole and not a second of it was even remotely surprising. Right. And that just tells you where you were. I think we both talked uh, when we were giving our predictions the other day that the Bears were basically at the mercy of Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes and 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 how long they wanted to stay engaged, how long it was going to take for them to get bored. Patrick Mahomes kicked his feet up after the, the, the seven and a half minute mark of the third quarter with 272 passing yards and three touchdowns and a 41 to nothing lead. And he said, hey, you know, Blaine Gabbert. Go out there and take this thing across the finish line. This was a disaster. It was a predictable disaster. They don't have any answers. They don't have any solutions. Nobody seems to to be at the forefront of of driving these things forward. I wrote in my column, David, at ChicagoTribune.com that it's kind of the grand slam of ineptitude right now because you've got a talent deficit. You've got a lack of confidence that stems from this losing streak. You have the dysfunctional drama of the Allen Williams resignation. And now you also have injuries piling up, most notably in your secondary. I just, I, I, I don't know that it can't go lower, David. I just don't know if it can't go any lower. By the way, they are underdogs at home in week four against a team that just gave up 70 freaking points. That's how bad it's gotten. And I think what's even more, I don't want to say adds more to the frustration, but I guess makes our point. When you look around the league and you see the Colts uh, doing what they did to Baltimore, you see... Uh, the the Texans beating a playoff team uh, handily in the Jaguars. You wonder when is it your turn, Chicago? When is, when are the Bears going to be one of those upstart just teams? Just one win. Just just one win. I mean, they now have lost thirteen in a row. They have not won a game since October twenty fourth. And you can look at the schedule and rationalize all you want, but those teams ahead, the Broncos, the Commanders, um, the Vikings, and then the Raiders, they're looking at the Bears as a as a break too because they saw. Patrick Mahomes treat Sunday like it was an exhibition game. They saw Andy Reid and Matt Nagy kind of laughing and mocking and, hey, let's try this. This will be fun. Everything was fun. When you're, when you're the Chiefs, everything was fun. I mean, Taylor Swift's here. Taylor Swift was in on the fun, for goodness sakes. How, how many good things does that team need? I mean, they've got Mahomes. They've got Kelsey. They've got Reid. Now they've got Tay-Tay. I mean, come on. It's – I mean, th- th- David, this was this was the example today of what the top of the league looks like, what elite play in the NFL looks like, and what the bottom looks like. And I think yeah. the Bears came to the harsh realization that, that, that they are light years away from wherever this team that, that plays in this building is at right now. We're standing outside the Bears locker room, getting ready to go into post-game interviews. And Herb Howard, who I think this is his third season on the beat, you know, obviously friend of the podcast, uh, good fill-in host when, when, when one of us is missing. And he said, he said, I look at some of you guys and I think to myself – I'm like a guy who just checked into prison and I'm standing next to these lifers going, does it ever get better? And you're all just like, no, nah, man, this is the norm around here. Like th- that's the feeling, right? Like it's the feeling. It's the feeling for, for too many people, uh, media fans, players that have been here for a while. Cole Komet season four for him said that this may have been the most demoralizing loss he's ever experienced. And he's had a few in his four years here. And he just says he, he can't remember a football game that looked like that, that he'd played it at any point in his life. It was the 23rd loss that Justin Fields has suffered as a starting quarterback. Is that, that's accurate, right? It might be, it might be the 24th. I don't know. I've lost it, count. I know. And, and I, you know, the thing is, is that when you're, when you're kind of 23rd, I through, think is right. It was five and 20 coming in. Yeah. It, the 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 memories you start to wonder like okay wh- they're not hard to find the good moments I've been covering this team for twenty years you got oh five and oh six which were nice 
You got 2010, which was cool until the end. You got 2018 because 2012 turned into a disaster. You fired a coach, went 10 and 6. You'd kill for 10 and 6 right now. <laughs> kill, I'd kill for 7 and 10. 2010, I'm sorry, 2018 seems like it was a lifetime ago, and now here we are. And I think this will be the tone of the conversations moving forward if they can be civil at all. And I don't blame your Bears fans if they're not, frankly. And it's fair game on everything. Wait till uh, we get to three-word reviews. You'll see how uh, civil and uncivil it is. Yeah, I get that. It's fair <laughs> game on everyone. We can question everything about everyone. You're in year two of the Ryan Poles, Matt Eberflus collaboration. And, and I don't know any longer. We're three games in, and I'm already starting to wonder if there's going to be a year three because it is that bad, and I don't think you can guarantee anything about, as you say, Dan, they haven't, maybe they haven't bottomed out yet. My, the last line in my column on 670thescore.com might be overly optimistic about there being nowhere to go but up, because now I want to rewrite. It could get lower. I want an editor. Where, where's a copy editor when you need it, for God's sake? Because this could, this could become even more farcical, and I think there's – you want to blame the quarterback? Go ahead. You want to blame the head coach? Go ahead. You want to blame – the general manager, go ahead. Oh, well, all of the above, including Luke Getze. What does that offense look like? Come on. Well, what is he supposed to do, David? What is he supposed to do? The quarterback wants to do things to play more freely. The head coach wants to find Justin's flow. They were in a football game today where they trailed by at least 14 points for the last 41 minutes. And they walked out of this building with 87 net passing yards. David, against a team that, that, that was bored for uh, two-thirds of the second half. You know, and, and, and you got 87 net passing yards, 99 gross for Justin Fields, 11 for 22, took three sacks through that costly interception in the first half on a ball that gets tipped over the middle, uh, just didn't put it where it needed to be and when it needed to be there. Uh, he wanted to, to get loose running a little more, had 11 rushes for 47 yards. Teams know that Justin Fields is explosive as a runner. They've figured out how to contain that. You have to have a counter punch. The Bears don't have a counter punch. You can call whatever plays you want. It's just not there. Darnell Mooney, zero catches today. Cole Komet, two catches today. Uh, DJ Moore doesn't get his first catch until there's three minutes left in the third quarter, winds up with three catches today. I mean, like, what are we doing? I mean, what drop. are we doing? He had a drop, too. You can't ignore that. Look, DJ Moore had to play the game when he got the coaches and the medical people out in the field to get Justin Fields off the field after that big hit. That was the, the most heads-up play any Bears player made all day, but DJ Moore also had a drop you can't ignore. I mean, and I'm Dan, I'm going to quote you to you. So this is me <laughs> quoting you to you. But he had a good day on Twitter. In 20 games – since the Bears made a regime change, what I'm talking about, in year three, I'm sorry, year two of the Flusi Eberflus, Flusi Poles regime, I can't even talk, I'm so pissed <laughs> off. So this is a 20-game total. They've been outscored 569 to 356. That That's an average every game out, 28 to 18. That's not getting beaten. That's getting embarrassed. They aren't even competitive, and that's the problem. Yeah, these, I mean, these blowout losses, all three of them this year are by double digits, and this one was the worst of the three, and, and you knew it was coming. Like I said, you know, like there is an appreciation for having a, a seat inside the stadium to watch one of the all-time greats do what he does, and when you see Mahomes make that 37-yard throw to Watson in the second quarter where he just, you know, he, do, he does things – to, to manipulate the pocket, to maneuver a little bit. And it, it's just, it's an impossible throw. And to see that from overhead, from that bird's eye view, and as he launches it, you're just like, there's there's not there's no room to fit that ball in along the sideline. It's perfect. Right perfect. on target. 37-yard completion, 88-yard touchdown drive. On they go. On they go. We've seen Aaron Rodgers throw six touchdowns and a half against the Bears. We've seen Tom Brady, you know, have a 35 nothing lead in Tampa on the Bears and, and whatever the score was in New England that one year when when the bottom fell out. You know, I, I put on Twitter on Saturday that this, you know, you've heard me in the past talk about lever losses, right? And lever losses are those ones where it's not just a loss. The lever comes and the trap door opens and everything falls, right? This was a lever loss, Dan. This felt like a lever loss. It, this yes. one's going to leave a mark. This is one that I just don't know that it won't. I mean, after three straight losses in the NFL, three losses constitutes a crisis. Somebody typically gets benched or fired. I don't know what's going to happen. Somebody else already lost their job last week. That was not by his choice, as it turns out, according to different reports. But this does feel like it's one of those things that you remember in 2014, it was getting embarrassed by the Packers and they had the meeting at Lambeau and the family mm -hmm. gathered and they said, we got to do something about this. I got to think that in the hours after getting 
humiliated 41 to 10 on the way back to Arrowhead, or maybe they, when they got back to Chicago, somebody in that, whether it's Kevin Warren or one of the McCaskies, goodness sakes, they said, we got to do something about this. You know, that's got to be the case because you can't just continue to say, we're going to work our ways out of this. You got to have some more creative, aggressive solutions. Matt Eberflus is a defensive coach. David, he was brought here to be a CEO coach, but he's still a defensive centric head coach. The Chicago Bears defense today had, uh, let's go through one by one the, the sacks that they had. Okay. <laughs> All right. End of segment. We're, we're done. No, no sacks. We're again, short on time. Right. Oh, no, they, I mean, they didn't have any anyway. The zero. Right, zero. exactly. So, I, I, I mean, listen. look, and like they got their first two takeaways in the season late in the game against Blaine Gabbert. Thanks to Blaine Gabbert, he's still in the league for that purpose, to make backup defenders feel good about themselves. Jack Sanborn, big, big interception. And then how Bears is this? You get your first takeaway of the season from uh, Jack Sanborn. What it turns into is a short field. You're in plus territory. And you have an 11-play, 25-yard field goal drive. <laughs> I mean, what? 11 play, 25 yard field goal drive. That's got to, there's got to be some stat head out there that's going to figure out is that the shortest? What are the shortest, <laughs> the longest, drives shortest that drive result ever. in a field goal that start yeah, like in plus territory? And, and then, yeah, take 11 plays. 11 plays. That's <laughs> I mean, right. 11, 11 yeah, the plays. Long, yeah, the, the longest short scoring drive in Bears history. Um, I, I it's just like I, the, the, everything, everything is astray right now. You add into the mix, you know, details start to surface, uh, o- over the weekend about, uh, Alan Williams uh, what I've called sudden and unusual resignation that, uh, it was indeed conduct related. Uh, sources have told Brad Biggs and I at the Tribune, Adam Schefter reports that Bears HR was involved to, uh, to, to look into, I believe his words were inappropriate behavior, um, it just adds to stuff, you know, and Cole Komet says in the locker room, you'd like to think that it didn't affect our preparation. Still think we had a good, good week of practice, but he's like, you know, guys are talking in the locker room and it is a bit of a distraction and it does create confusion and it, it does of se- course. send you staggering. You of know? course. This They're league humans. is not kind. This league is not kind to people who are staggering. I think you see a starting quarterback now who stands up at the post game podium and is reeling. It's the second straight week that he's talked about the gratitude he has for being able to play football. And I, I give him credit for being able to put an optimistic slant and, and have some uh, perspective on things. But this is not the, the 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 rhetoric you hear from the greats in the league. You know, a about 24 year old quarterback who's a franchise quarterback in Chicago should not be publicly giving thanks for how lucky he is to be playing in the NFL two weeks in a row. You love the perspective. It's a great message to send to all little, you know, quarterbacks out there who might be doubting themselves and wondering if they can really do it. But that's not the way that you want to talk after. I mean, you shouldn't have to be in that situation. And I think that's probably sounds like it's a defense mechanism. That's what he's leaning on, the crutch that he needs. But he shouldn't need a crutch that early in his career. No, and the crutch that he wants on the field is the the ability to be able to run, to run around and make highlight reel plays. And, you know, I mean, one of his comments post game today was just about, hey, look, like I I did so many great things last year. It's not like defenses aren't going to going to account for me. Well, they've been accounting for you now yeah. since 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 yep. early November of a year ago. And and the Bears have not the, the, developed that counter punch. I sit here, David, and I just I don't know what I'm going to do at Hallis Hall this week. I literally don't know what I'm going to do. There's like there is just not much more to say. There is not much more to ask. There is not much more to sift through all of this hollow, um, you know, explanation that you get. You know, yeah, they're there. You, you know, they're still early and there's still I got four a games left. What? All yeah. Right. Okay, go to Naperville. When did Sean Payton become so cocky? The story. <laughs> there you it's go. Coming down, you know. There yeah, you go. Yeah. Go off, go go off the grid. I don't know. You're right. I mean, it gets redundant. It gets painfully redundant. People painfully tired, redundant. Pay, people are talking. Tired of talking about it and writing about it. Yeah, you know, we have to write and talk about it. It's it's okay. It's it, it's it's understandable frustration. That's what I mean. No, like, nobody should be off off guard, or I'm sorry, I should be out of bounds this week. Any kind of criticism is definitely warranted. You know, it's like when, when you talked last week about the Bears taking over possession with a chance to go tie the game in Tampa and just knowing that they weren't going to do it. It was the same thing today where you, you they're, they're losing by 41 to nothing, and you're just like, yeah, about, about right. That's about right. You know, like never even competed in this game. Like they, they, they got the, the Chiefs to punt on the first possession. 
Good job. <laughs> seven consecutive scoring drives by the Chiefs. They scored nice. seven consecutive times when they had the ball. And, and uh, uh, One more <laughs> thought before we bring in Adam Stazinski for a declaration and we get to our three-word reviews because we had maybe 600 of those roughly. <laughs> um, I do think this. The next thing that I'm keeping an eye on or the one thing that resonated this week and beyond the total humiliation on the field, when you have this many problems on the field and you're non-competitive and then you have a regime that's preaching culture in the front office and in the coaches' offices and then you have an assistant leave the way Alan Williams left and it's because of inappropriate behavior, it makes it very difficult, especially kind of much lesser, I'm not equating the two, but also in a, in a week where you had some public hubbub about how your players are dealing with uh, responsibility or accountability, that's all related to the culture. It's a big umbrella, but you can't be the coach that gets blown out every Sunday and says everything's going to be okay because of this culture we brought to this organization when that culture smells. And, it, and it's not real strong right now. So that's what I think will end up being as big of a problem potentially as the stuff on the field. Well, that I mean, that's a very significant sentiment that you just expressed there. And by the same token, you can't also talk for months about how you established this foundational floor in 2022. And despite the 14 losses, we've got it all together. And then three with three games into the, the next season, be like, well, we got too many new players and we're still trying to to create our chemistry and and, and build our build our identity. And because it's all new, it's all new. It's not new. We're 20 games in. You're three and 17. You haven't really shown the ability to develop a single coach or player on the staff. No one really knows what the strength of your entire operation is. I, I like, I, I can't believe that it's September 24th and that we have, we have 14 more games. Do you think I'm overstating the culture thing? No, not at all. Okay. Not, even, not even a little bit. No, I, 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 yeah, I think it's I, a significant sentiment. No, I, 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 I do. I do think, I do think it's one of not even a little bit because we were both there when the second year, of Tressman's regime. And I said, this was Tressman era terrible. And the reason why it's comparable now is because of that dysfunction that is starting to creep in with, you know, you have a locker room that's confused. You have a a coaching staff that is compromised now. And you have, you have basically a message that you can't trust. You can't trust the message and you coming in, everybody's new and everybody's starting and everyone wants to believe in the acronyms and all sounds great until something like this happens. So I think that's the biggest takeaway for me beyond the ridiculous embarrassment on the field. Quick question, Nate Davis, why didn't he play? Still dealing with personal issues from the okay. the, de- the death of his mother a week okay. ago. Um, right. You know, he was, he was active today. He was in uniform, but he's and, a backup. Uh, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't play. He backup. Jatari, Jatari Carter started. Okay. Yeah. And so that's another issue where you just, you have none of these position groups with the cohesion and continuity that they aim to get out of them. You were hurt during the, 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 the training camp preseason portion of things. Now injuries continue to add up. By the way, Eddie Jackson didn't play today. Jalen Johnson left with a hamstring issue. Tyreek Stevenson looked like he took a, a blow to the head, was evaluated for a concussion, came back in the game, left again, was officially, you know, ruled that he had an illness. Um, you know, so where does this go from here? You know, where, where does this go this week? You, you, you finished the game with a, a secondary of Jaquan Brisker, Quindell Johnson, uh, Josh Blackwell, Jalen Jones, and and who, who am I missing? Terrell Smith, the rookie. Oh, uh, man. And, and you're doing that against Mahomes, Kelsey, Andy Reid, and, and the Chiefs. I don't know if we're going to give out game balls, but I think that we have, have to listen to Adam and take his lead. So, Studs, what do you think? Does anybody deserve a game ball? You're the resident <laughs> game ball expert. What do you think? Yeah, uh, it's an official declaration, guys. We're not handing out game balls until this team wins a game. Period. Okay, we're not doing that. We're not, okay. we're not like this. This team doesn't deserve that kind of credit. They, like last year, it was fine to hand out game ball, like token game balls, and in, in bad losses when when they weren't fit to win games against. Like, what about QB one not, parties? Are we having any of those? No, we're not doing that. any QB one parties. <laughs> I just want to know. Hey, Danny happening? Parkins isn't on this podcast. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, we're at the CC him on that. All right. We'll CC Danny Parkins. No, on that. no parties and no uh, game balls until they win. When are they going to win a game, Adam? I man, if they look, let me just say this: the next two weeks, next two games they have should be beatable teams. If they can't find a way to win those two games, I don't know when they win. 
to, to win one of those next two games. I don't know when they win. I two, really don't. Two games in 11 days. That's not going to be easy. No, it's All not. right, so you proclaim, Studs proclaims, no game balls until the Bears actually win and post a victory. I well, listen, I, given the budget we had and the game balls I brought here to Kansas City, I just went over to the other side of the, the building. I gave one to Pat. I gave one to my friend Travis, and I gave one to Taylor. And that was it. The three, the three <laughs> game fun. balls. Could I you gave, just have I, her sign it for me? Because <laughs> I'm the, I am the Swifty of the group, okay? Yeah, you know, I'm yeah. the one. How about, if I, I worked yeah, Taylor about, Swift lyrics into in song titles into my column just because she was there. How about how about Chicago royalty royalty Jared Payton getting me. the video of the the video of them leaving the stadium together? That's Jared's everywhere. <laughs> Jared, yeah. Jared, probably, Jared probably is going to be on stage next time Tay Tay comes to Chicago. That, I mean, he knows everybody. By, by tomorrow morning, that video is going to be like the number one most viral <laughs> video on the internet. <laughs> But by the way, just a little, just a little note to this because about about your uh, comment there, Adam, about the, the these next two games coming up. Don't forget the mm-hmm. 2014 Bears, even after their, their the, the bottom fell out when they lost those back to back games with 50 burgers to the Patriots and Packers. They came back and won two in a row. They beat the Vikings and they beat the Bucks, and everyone still knew that it was just they were just like marshmallow wins, and you just you know you take them and you, but you knew they didn't mean Good anything. Memory. And so, oh, yeah, you know, memory, Dan. I, I, I think that no, that, like Dan, I don't disagree with that at all. Like I remember that, yeah. But everyone knew that that team wasn't going anywhere, and yeah. it, it could be the same thing. They they could easily win two games in a row and be two and three, but it depends on how they look doing it, right? Right, like, right, right. If they just kind of right. slop kinda their does. way to, to to sloppy wins, then it doesn't mean much. Insane, insane. All right, let's get the three word uh, uh, assessment so I can uh, get ready for the. Uh, I can't wait until the callers on Monday morning. On the Mullion Haw Show, that's going to be a treat. I cannot wait till five thirty. Can't get here soon enough, Dan. Three word responses from our our audience. My old uh, college roommate from the University of Illinois, Jeff Christensen, <laughs> chimes in and 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 gives us "Burn It Down." Okay. <laughs> Oh, man, you guys must have been a lot of fun. <laughs> Dan, Dan, oh, we were. Uh, Dan Durkin uh, throws us only okay. fourteen, only fourteen more. Okay. Oh just God, more. is that all? Uh, Jim McGrew, I like this one. Picks one, comma two. He's already planning for for a Bears Panthers complete bottom out. We were talking on Saturday afternoon with some some buddies uh, out here in in uh, the Power and Light District in Kansas City the bears could potentially try to take Caleb Williams twice just to assure that they got him. <laughs> if they, got, if they got one and two. Hey, by the way, did you see what CJ Stroud did today? Well, did you see what his like numbers he was are lighting after? it up. Did, three games. I, I digress. Go ahead. Keep going. Ryan Poles was not blown away. No. Uh, Brad Baumgarten gives us a, a sentiment that I think is very popular right now. Hate it here. <laughs> padded walls brad come join me uh is that brad Baumgartner or, or justin fields <laughs> uh we've got jb gives us mark trestman flashbacks okay yep, we know that tyler mcdonald zero job safe i think you agree with that also i agree with that uh, if you're kevin warren you can't look at anybody who has job security or any aspect you're not going to reevaluate Matt, 68, Sundays are open. It's like I tell my mom. She says, what time are the Bears on this weekend? I say, Mom, go do something else. <laughs> right. have, a, have an enjoyable Sunday. Go do something else. Pick uh, out a couple something. more here. Ryan Drost, Bears buried swiftly. Very oh, nicely done. I love that one. That Very guy should get a prize done. or something. I know. Yeah. We need to start giving out prizes, especially yes. with this thing. That's uh, awesome. A couple, couple more here. Jake Bressler, tailor-made embarrassment. That's oh, another, another oh. good one. Man, right, like I use this stuff. See, it's people, great. people step up. This is this is like I get on the airplane on on the way back from road games. And I just go through all hundreds of these and like this is great. Uh, Christopher gave us saw that coming. We talked about that. Dan Chappe gave us need new leadership. There's worse than awful. Make it stop. Bad but expected. You know where we're going from here. Yeah, let's, we know where we're going. There. It's all there, and we can have it. You can have all of us here on the uh, Take the North podcast on your free Odyssey app. You can watch us on YouTube on the 670 Scores YouTube page. Gosh, it's been a long weekend. It seems like it's been a long season, and we've got 14 more to go. Dan, travel safely, get some rest, get back, and we'll do this again so we can drop another episode on Tuesday morning. Maybe we'll feel a little bit better then or find out what people have to say. Do we we'll have break to? Break it down in detail. But this was, uh, Do we have to? We really yeah, have to? I, think, I, think, I think people want to talk about it. I think we, right. need to talk, we need to talk it out. We can't hug it out. We need All to talk right. it out. <laughs> um, thanks for everyone's contributions. Those three-word essays or reactions were, were classic. And for Adam Sadinsky and Dan Weeder, I'm David Haw. Thank you for listening to the Take the North 
podcast stands in a padded room. Help! Help! Let me out of here! Let me out of here! Next time.